Oh, I think it's a huge game changer. Obviously, we had Governor Murphy in New Jersey, and you just mentioned Governor Northam in Virginia. You know, this is a really strong economic issue as well as a social issue. And so I think we're really getting to the tipping point of where the states are starting to fall in terms of cannabis legislation. It's not just the U.S., it's also around the world. Aurora today sells its products in over 13 countries. And so I think the global position on cannabis and cannabinoids in general is definitely positive for companies like Aurora. Oh, we were talking about this earlier uh, on the team, Miguel. As part of the bill in Virginia, it says home cultivation of up to four plants per household permitted. Is that something you would rather not see included? Is that a threat to your business or anything just generally moving in, in the direction of, of legalization is, is all positive? No, it's not a threat. You know, we see that um, structure in Canada and other markets. It's sort of like home brewing that you see in craft beer. Any sort of connection to the plant, overall awareness and positivity around that aspect is good for the industry. So, you know, when you see those home grow provisions, it's definitely not a detriment. We think it definitely creates stickiness for the consumer to the overall category and definitely is a positive. So we've seen a lot of consolidation, Miguel, in the industry in preparation for this opening up of legalization. The big biggie is Tilray Afria. We've talked to those CEOs. Canopy's bulked up. Where, where does that leave you in terms of a, a push into the U.S.? Can you do it without having more scale, a bigger partner, and, and a better balance sheet? Yeah, I mean, we absolutely think we can. I mean, I think the strength of Aurora is the diversity of its business. As I mentioned, we operate in 13 countries. We have the number one medical business in Canada. We have one of the largest international medical businesses. We have the number one CBD brand, according to Nielsen, in the U.S., and we have a strong rec business. So the diversity of our overall business and the science and genetics behind the company, I think, put us in a good position. You mentioned the balance sheet. You know, overall performance year over year has really been strong for Aurora, and we have over $500 million on the balance sheet, and we're in a position to be opportunistic. When it comes to the U.S., I would tell you, not always is bigger, better in this situation. I think the science, the regulatory expertise, and the history that Canadian LPs have, particularly Aurora, in the Canadian market will play you know, really strong in the U.S. I expect the FDA will have a lot to say about the U.S. market, and the only real companies that have that type of regulatory experience are the Canadian LPs. So we think we're in a great position at the time in which the U.S. opens up its market. Why do you think your stock has, has lagged uh, some of your peers uh, over the last six to 12 months? Well, you know, I think there's a lot of um, aspects to that. I think, first and foremost, we are just at the beginning of this transformation, and I can understand people are looking for that. The recent quarter versus a year ago, I think, gives a strong indication that we're on the right path. I think, you know, you have a lot of retail investors, and we're just now starting to see institutional investors, um, and that there are some investors that really want to see a, you know, a piece of the U.S., even if it doesn't make exact sense at this juncture. So, you know, it's my job and the job of our management team to prove to others, but with medical margins in the 60s, with a growing international piece of business, as I mentioned, the number one CBD brand in the U.S., I think there's a lot to like in the Aurora story for investors long term. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.